Welcome all to the clinical biochemistry course. Welcome all to the clinical biochemistry course. Let us start with the unit four, which has gastric function based, pancreatic, and intestinal function based. So, gastric function test starts with the normal functioning of gastric functions, as we can know the normal general function of gastric secretion. And the gastric function test is very important for the clinical diagnosis process, especially which are pertaining to the pathological condition which are pertaining to gastroenterology. The chemical examination of gastric contents has a limited but specific value in the diagnosis and assessment of disorders of the upper gastrointestinal tract, for example, peptic ulcer, cancer, and any inflammatory conditions of stomach. In order to obtain the complete data regarding the gastric function and the contents of the stomach, you should examine two different parameters. One is during the resting period, you can examine the gastric tubes. So the second one is during the period of digestion, which is after given a meal, or after stimulation test, after performing any of the stimulation, then after stimulation test can also be performed. So the major constituent of the gastric tube secretions are the HCL, which is secreted by parenchyal cell, hexinogen, which is secreted by zymogen cell or chip cells, and renin, which is actually not found in the gastric tube of adults, but you can expect in infants and babies. So only those uh, infants and babies will have the secretion of renin, whereas the adults will not have the secretion of renin. Apart from that, the intrinsic factor, which is required for the absorption of vitamin B12, also will be present. Other than that, they will also have alkaline nucleus. So the major pathological conditions which are pertaining to gastric function test, which will be used to detect the pathological condition as well as the any conditions or disorders which are pertaining to the gastric function. So you can identify gastric ulcer and also pernicious anemia or peptic ulcer or solin, solin or LSM syndrome. Apart from that, whether the surgical vagotomy is done perfectly or completely will be identified with the help of gastric function tests. So the major commonly employed gastric function test assessments which includes examination of the resting content of the resting tubes, the fractional gastric analysis using the test tree, examination of the contents after stimulation, alcohol stimulation, ketamine stimulation, histamine stimulation, augmented histamine stimulation, insulin stimulation, and pentagastrin stimulation. So, apart from all these stimulation tests, we also have fluid gastric analysis. So, the gastric stimulation test will be included by giving any of the stimulants such as the previously stated stimulant, either pectin, alcohol, or histamine, or inulin, or pentagastrin. So once if the required amount of uh, the stimulant has been ingested, either by means of oral route or by means of intravenous route, actually they will pass a raised tube to empty the stomach contents. The stomach contents are emptied by uh, two and a half hours uh, time interval. So around two and a half hours time interval, three minutes once, the gastric contents will be empty and the particular content will be used for testing purpose. So here, uh, the raised tube will be present throughout the study, throughout that two and a half hours, where we collect the sample and this will lead to an uh, uncomfortableness which will be provided with the particular subject who is undergoing the stimulation test. In order to avoid the trauma, the pain, and the discomfort which is caused by the insertion of raised tube was overcome with the help of the tubeless gastric function test. So here, we will not use the raised tube. Instead, we will directly use the gastric uh, tube secretion by means of indirect method where you don't use the raised tube. So we call this as tubeless gastric analysis or tubeless gastric function test. So here we use some resins and the resins which will be reacting with the H plus. If the amount of H plus which is present in the stomach is more, the more number of quinine resin will be used. If it is less, less quinine resin will be used. So it depends on the how much amount or how many number of molecules of H plus which is present in the stomach. Accordingly, the quinine resin will react to form quinine ion or quinine ion. And that quinine ion will be combined with the HCL. So you get quinine HCL in the small in the stomach. And that quinine HCL will be absorbed in the small intestine, which can be excreted in the 
urine and the excreted quinine will be extracted from the urine sample and it will be deducted using urometer. 